Andrew, you drew your game today against Vasily Vanchuk. Uh, is this one of the biggest uh, results of your chess career till date? Yes, so far I think it's uh, one of the biggest achievements. Not, not an achievement, but the result, yes. Um, especially that uh, Ivanchuk is a world-class player and he beats the world's top. So this result really is a big motivation for me. So let's go through the game. You played the white side from the Queen's Gambit decline. Yes. Uh, and uh, this variation where you pushed your pawn to g4. Correct. Uh, were you prepared for it or was it something you had done some homework earlier or before the game? It was actually a bit surprising that eventually went for that line, firstly. So I think I spent about 20 minutes after playing g4 on making up a plan. And because I knew that he is not very, he doesn't play that variation very often, I think I had my chances. So he gave me an early pawn sacrifice on h5. I took another, I went into deep thought and finally decided to take the pawn. I think uh, it was a very good idea because there was no way that he could add a third attacker to the pawn. So by the time he's trying to, to mobilize his pieces to attack my position, I will also unravel. And that's exactly what happened in the game. And I think it had a special moment because if I hadn't um, played bishop g4 at some point, uh, it would have just been a position which had de deteriorated because his knights were going to be very strong in that position. So I really think um, the plan I chose was good. Then another critical moment came when he decided to make things simple. He gave, uh, he gave me a pawn, so we're exchanging the edge pawns, but then I had an active rook. So because of that, I, I think I still feel my chances were better. Um, he played rook h1. That was a difficult moment because I was like, oh, this, guy, this guy's technique must be better than mine. But I was like, oh, oh, I'm the Zambian champion, so I can contain this guy. So that's how I went for a sharp knight a4 line. And if he misplays, I checkmate him, or we, I go for a perpetual. So I think that line gave me a lot of chances uh, that I chose. I, I looked at rook b8, um, somewhere towards uh, around, around the 30s, Rook b8 attacking the b pawn, but I also thought he is going to easily defend his position. So that's why I went for knight a4. That was, I think, the other critical moment. Then after the rook exchange, I think it was a simple draw. I, I, I couldn't possibly lose that. So right. all in all, I think it, was, it has some positional um, critical moments when you have to make the correct plan and, and um, play a move that is, that is to the test of the position. Did you think you could win the game at some point that you were better? Yes, I actually did. But um, seeing the simplicity of the position and also seeing that it could be double edged if I played badly, I, I played it safe because, I mean, it's not a very bad thing to draw against a 2 7 and that, for that matter, Vasily eventually. So I just played it safe and let him push, let him push, and he made the correct decision, went for simplification, and it finally drew. Well, it's one thing to draw against a 2700 player, but quite another to do it against Ivan Chuk, <laughs> who is like a world class player. Correct. So when you are facing him and uh, you're playing against a guy like him, how do you keep your confidence and believe in your abilities when the position gets complicated? So it's about planning. So the reason that I think two sevens and two sixes and two fives, the reason that they massacre people who are two three is the quality of the plans are very, almost, can I say, they're not very strong. So because of that, um, he has an easy time uh, finding moves and dominating his plan over you. So it was a game where I'm making my plan, he's making his plan. So I counted his plan against mine. And if you look at my game against two 600s, I, I don't play bad against those. I think I do very well because I, I make very strong plans on the board. And that's how to keep your, your confidence up. If you're meeting a 2-6, um, uh, a 2-7, I, I feel you need to know firstly your lines and then thereafter, Ensure you calculate everything and make sure you know what you're doing. Create a plan and follow it. 
I think when you play against stronger players, you are extra motivated to do this, and that's how yes. you are able to play well. Yes, correct, correct. <laughs> and we we have learned that you are also an accountant. Uh, how do you manage your chess career as well as accountancy? <laughs> that's an interesting question. So I started chess late, but uh, around fell. But um, one thing that really helped is you know how academics are. They challenge on their own. So. Uh, when you, the time that I was doing my accountancy, that, that work uh, where you have to study for something to make sure that you pass. I remember the time I was studying my master's degree, again you have to study for it and make sure you pass. And even at work, you have to make sure you get results. So it's about the attributes that you get as you, as you go higher in education, as you, do, as you become a professional. So for me, those attributes are what help me balance and every day I do train, I train very hard every day, just a few hours, not so many hours. But you are able to do it every day? Yes, I'm able to do it every day. So it's about consistency. I believe in shorter periods, quality um, time rather than longer periods because I'm not a professional player like the others where you can spend eight hours in a day. So it's about quality then. So the tools that I'm using, things like um, chess pairs um, and other tools become critical because they make you efficient and out of that efficiency you're able to balance out things. That's fantastic and do you yeah. plan to become a GM? Of course, I think, I think for Zambia, Zambia has a plan to have a GM within the next four years so apparently I am next online so I, I think I have the correct attributes to become the next GM in Zambia. And then Does start Zambia another. already have GMs? Yes, I'm on Zimutowe. Okay. Yeah, but then he hasn't been active for some time. So I, I, I really think um, with the executive that's there and their drive to have a GM, I feel I'm in the right place at uh, the right time and I would definitely push to become a GM. Fantastic. And uh, how is chess in Zambia? Uh, you said that there's already one grandmaster. Yes. Uh, is it like very popular in the country or there's support for the sport? You should have seen uh, we had a tournament in October, where we had the Zambia Open, we had GM uh, Hesham coming from all the way from Egypt. We had Grover from India. Yes. Yeah, so you can, uh, you can even tell uh, with the number of people that participated in the Zambia Open, I think we had about 300. So because of the executive, because of what the executive under Mukubolo is doing, things are slowly taking shape. And um, it's becoming competitive because I, um, I have seven other IMs that, we, that are in Zambia, so it's not very easy, but then because of their presence, I, 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 it's, it's helping the competition. And with this um, plan for, the, for, for an, a GM within the next four years, it's really boosted and encouraged people to push very hard for their chess. Yeah. I met David Silva, who's also an IM from Africa, from Angola. Uh, he said that the difficulty for him to improve is not getting quality coaching. Correct. I, do you face the similar problem as well? Uh, no. So, in school, uh, academics, I, w I would be that guy who would always go out of class and then study on my own and beat everyone. <laughs> so, I can do things on my own because I think the principle, once you get the principle, um, it, you can actually go through it alone. And it's also about the foundation. So I had a very strong foundation in chess. Where, because of? Where, where? The strong foundation is because of? Because of people. I, I learned from people like Nasser Lungu, people like Misato Sumito at that time. So I, I learned quite a lot from other people. And over time, as I get more exposure, I'm learning. I, I, I learned from guys like Basim, guys like Adli. And then, you know, it's, it's about learning. It's about taking, um, what can I say, good practice? and then uh, implement it into yourself. So I think a coach is good, but it's not really critical. I think it's more about the tournaments for me than the coach. And for David Silva, he's a big talent. And what I think about him is a guy can actually become GM very soon. So I don't know about his, um, he, the weakness that he perceives to be, but what I think about David is, I'll have a chat after with him about this. I really think he's on the right path, and I think if he adds some classical chess to, to, his, to his playing style, 
he will become very deadly because uh, he's a very big tact tactician. So when you simplify the position or you make it very boring, ah, you, then you got him. So there are a few aspects about his personality as a chess player and his pressure to become grandmaster that needs to be refined. Yeah. Well, th th those were very nice insights and I'm sure David would uh, benefit a lot from that. Uh, one question we have been asking to everyone and would ask to you as well is what does Chess Olympiad mean to you? It's the biggest event. So it's, it's an honor to actually play the Olympiad. And yesterday's opening ceremony was beautiful. So it's, uh, you know, like these beautiful experiences for Olympiads, they really make you feel you want to play chess some more. And meeting people like you, and meeting other people, it's it's one of those rare moments when I get to see chess players. I even get to play Ivanchuk, so <laughs> it's very difficult. But then I've gotten to play him, and I'm very delighted with that. So for me, uh, the Olympiad is about the biggest event that I know. Of. It's ultimately one that I always look forward to. Well, Andrew, congratulations for the draw today, and we hope that you become a GM soon. Thank you very much.